Well, welcome and thank you for joining us for this conversation with Major Jenny Beegent uh, from the Salvation Army. Uh, my name's Julie McCrossan, and we're here to discuss uh, Major Jenny, Jenny's work uh, to provide safe and inclusive spaces and working environments and services for LGBTIQ people uh, within the Salvation Army. And we'll use the term rainbow now, eh, rather than all the letters. Welcome to you, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm quite excited about this conversation. No, good. Because, uh, you know, I, I've met you through uh, Salvation Army conferences and uh, uh, other uh, social services conferences in Australia and had a, a, a learnt a little bit about your work in the rainbow world. And uh, I just wanted to uh, bring it to a broader audience. But before we begin, just tell us how long have you been involved with the Salvation Army and what's your current uh, role and responsibility? Well, I've been involved with the Salvation Army all of my life, actually, um, but I've been an officer, which is really um, a minister of religion, for nearly 40 years, all of that time working in the social services sector for the organisation and the majority of the last 20 years in leadership of some description. Uh, and I'm currently the National Head of International Development for the Salvation Army. So I've moved on from my role as the National Head of Social Services to a new role in the last couple of months. Okay. And, and in that former, recently former role of social services, my understanding is services for, for children, for families, domestic violence, homelessness, that's what social services essentially means. Yes, yeah, so the Salvation Army Social Services is um, predominantly family violence, homelessness, uh, addictions, and so AID, working in the AID sector, working with young people in youth services and community engagement, which is really um, emergency relief, food parcels and financial support and counselling for people who are doing it tough, basically. And AOD is, of course, alcohol and other drugs. That's the, right, yes. Let, let's come to the issue of rainbow people. Yeah. What's been the, the core purpose of your work uh, with the rainbow community, both in terms of staff and in clients? Yeah. It's been to help people feel uh, that the Salvation Army is a safe space, basically. Um, and we know that for a lot of LGBTIQ people, a lot of rainbow people feel really unsafe in mainstream services and the Salvation Army is a mainstream service. So one of the things that we wanted to do quite some time ago, it's probably nearly 10 years ago now, um, was to ensure that the Salvation Army provided safe spaces for people so that um, they could come with whatever problems they had, whatever issues, and get the same support as anybody else and feel that they were cared for in that space. Now, obviously, the Salvation Army is known as a strong uh, Christian organisation. It's its fundamental purpose. It, 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 it's this welcoming of rainbow people linked to your faith. Uh, yes, we have a lot of soldiers and um, officers who are um, who um, identify as LGBTIQ. Um, we have lots of friends of the organisation that identify. Um, having said that, though, you just touched on, we're a religious organisation and within the Salvation Army, as within any church, the thinking is broad. There are two things that I kind of adhere to. One is Jesus said, the only commandment I need you to do is to love me and to love others. For me, that's the end of the story. Um, and you couple that with a cup of cold water in whatever circumstance. So when people come in need, we can't always supply exactly what they want, but we try in some way to offer some kind of support and to create an environment where they not just feel safe, but feel that they can prosper from that environment. Some of the things you've been doing to uh, bring about that cultural change for staff who may have never thought about it, and, and you're saying, look, we want to be openly welcoming to clients uh, uh, who are LGBTIQ rainbow people. 
Well, what have you been doing to get that cultural change within the organisation? So we've actually had a number of working groups around the country. We started off very small um, with the um, St Kilda Crisis Service in Victoria in downtown Melbourne. And um, from there, we commenced a bit of a journey, really, in Victoria. And then when I became the National Head of Social Mission, the journey went nationally because um, I just, you know, I explained earlier, I don't see any reason to exclude anybody um, from a service or from the gospel (laughs) at all. So um, that's the way it is. So we, we did some workshops. We've done training the other thing we've done is um, create some icons. Um, we've put it, we make sure all our services have flags and posters that people know how to create the spaces. They know how to work with people who might identify as rainbow in whatever form that is. And we work really hard on ensuring that staff understand that it is um, a non negotiable in our services. But when you say non-negotiable, that that are you saying that as a leader in the, uh, the Salvation Army in Australia, you're saying you, you need to welcome LGBTIQ plus people just like you'd welcome anyone else? So absolutely. Not- yes, absolutely. It does not matter um, what you're identifying as, you will get a service and I'm really hopeful that Today, anywhere in Australia, if you walk through the door, you will get a service, but not just that, you'll get more than that. You'll get the impression that this is a safe space and you're cared for and you've got an opportunity here to move forward. One of the things I've noticed is that uh, when I've met you at conferences and things is uh, some Salvation Army staff have lanyards with their, like, rainbow lanyards. Say for people, rainbow flags are a kind of symbol uh, of the rainbow or the LGBTIQ community. They've got little, uh, the shield of the army rainbow. You've attended pride marches with Salvation Army banners. I mean, was that, how challenging was it to get that? It was very challenging, very challenging. So the first pride march, I think, was around 2016. Um, in Victoria, which is a much more sedate affair than Mardi Gras. Um, We didn't get, at that point, people were quite supportive. Um, And the Salvation Army, unlike the Uniting Church or the Anglican Church, have separated out the church from the um, social services. So we are not two separate organisations. We are actually interlinked and governed by the one framework. So that means that the church has um, quite a significant part to play in the way we run our social services. Um, so we had some detractors. <laughs> within, within your organisation? Within the organisation, within, certainly within the church. Um, but we did it anyway. We've marched in every Victorian Pride March since then. Um, there was a period of time where we could not um, carry the shield So we could put the service number on, we could write the Salvation Army on a banner, but the shield couldn't be present. I can't tell you why. I couldn't understand the reasoning, but nevertheless, that didn't stop us. And a small group, usually it varies on on depending on the day um, as to whether we have 20 or 70 or whatever marching, but we always get out there. Um, two years ago when um, we came up for the Pride March again, we were actually going through the accreditation for the Rainbow Tick in Victoria, which is an accreditation that is applied to all social services to ensure they are all safe and secure. Um, And so we asked um, our leadership if we could put the um, shield on the banners And for the first time ever, we could. It was a very emotional time for people like myself who are Salvationists to be able to put the red shield on a banner and march in a pride march saying the Salvation Army welcomes you and um, 
not just provide safe space, but we want you to come through the door and we want to love you and care for you. Um, just and I guess for me that that particular march was very significant and th it was the amount of support and grace we received from the rainbow community was um, unbelievable. It was also the first time we engaged with the Mardi Gras in Sydney. So that year we were allowed to be part of a broader group, but people knew we were Salvation Army and we did the bridge walk. So internally for the Salvation Army, whilst there was a lot of opposition, there was significant support from the leadership and they were significant moments in our history um, because, as you know, we have a chequered history in this particular area um, and I know the first Pride March in Sydney, the first Mardi Gras that the Salvation Army Band marched in protest <laughs> against it. I didn't know that. And I, I just say for people who aren't aware, the Bridge March uh, uh, in 2023 was uh, Sydney World Pride. So it was like a national, uh, 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 international and a national event across, uh, uh, and a huge march across the Sydney Harbour Bridge uh, with, I think our Prime Minister was there from memory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's amazing. Uh, could I just say... Um, Many rainbow people, LGBTIQ people, have experienced homelessness in their youth um, because family can find it so traumatic or, or shocking or surprising or unacceptable that children can leave home in, in abrupt circumstances. And, and secondly, in my lifetime, and I'm, I'm 70 this year, uh, rainbow people have always been overrepresented among people with alcohol and drug issues. Uh, and people uh, tend to think that's connected to social discrimination, family rejection, so we tend to have a higher level of drug and alcohol issues. So those sorts of uh, representations, information to the leadership of the Army, Salvation Army, has that helped you to gain acceptance or has it been more theological, people saying, yes, the love of Jesus, we're there for everyone, as Wesley said? Yeah, it's been both. I think you can divorce in your head the need to provide a service from having a theological point of view. Um, so I think that even those of our number who are um, absolutely opposed to the lifestyle could still provide an adequate service to someone and do so. Um, the issue for me around that is that that... The, the Salvation Army, the, the word, what am I trying to say? The explanation is in the name. So the Salvation Army doesn't save people, but it does provide the opportunity for them to actually experience the kind of freedom that being saved from things that are scary or that are destroying yourself is a part of what we do. So if we can't add love to that, then we shouldn't be in the business at all. Um, if we can't give what I would consider the extra that comes from the heart of Christianity, which is about being able to give a cup of cold water and be Christ in the world, then I, th I would suggest the Salvation Army shuts up shop and goes home <laughs> because it's not our mandate. Um, so, th so this, uh, you know, the love and care for a person who's homeless or has drug and alcohol problems, whatever. Could I just uh, close? Our, our time is up, but you've referred several times to the glass of cold water. Is that an expression you use for, like, offering uh, fundamental service and care to people? Yes. Um, well, for me it is, and for me it's critical to the way I am in the world because um, Jesus said, you know, if you do this in my name, if you give the cup of cold water in my name, um, then this person has an opportunity to flourish in the world. Um, so that's what I hang my hat on. It, I think that's critical because Christ wasn't about, you know, sitting in the temple or big um, worship services or, you know, whatever the church looks like today. He was about being out and about and healing people and sitting with them and journeying with them and helping them to flourish for themselves. And that's 
I guess the reason that I've spent 40 years in social services, it is about how I am as as Christ's representative in the world. And that was always open, loving, honest with people and creating spaces for people to actually really um, be the best they can be in the world. And that includes rainbow people who, you know, love is love, I think, yeah, I just I my struggle is with those who don't accept that love is love because there's no other way to change the world anyway. And you know, there's a great phrase of Margaret Mead who who kind of said things like, um, "Don't be ashamed to have a go at changing the world. If even if there's only two of you, it's the only thing that's ever worked." I, I just uh, on behalf of the the rainbow world that has been part of my life uh, all my life I, I just want to thank you for your uh, your your compassionate and and committed work uh, to create safe and inclusive places for the staff within the Salvation Army uh, but also for your clients and so Major Jenny Beejan thank you very much thank you thank you